Welcome back to another episode of the Hijra channel as I send you peace, love, blessings and greetings from our home village here in Azad Kashmir, Pakistan with Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. In this episode, we will attempt to highlight why it is our belief that the island of Al Masih al Dajjal, the false messiah or the Antichrist, is none other than the island of Britain. If we are indeed correct in our analysis that the island of the Antichrist is Britain, then history will record that Britain would become center stage in the world. So let us now go through the main points of this famous and extraordinary hadith, uh, which is recorded in Sahih Muslim, and the full hadith can be found in the description part of the video below. A Christian man who later accepted Islam named Tamim al-Dari came to the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, and told him about a mysterious event. Tamim al-Dari and some of his 30 companions set sail on a ship from Arabia, when suddenly a storm came and blew the ship away. For 30 days, for one month they remained on the ship until eventually it came to rest upon an island surrounded by water. Nabi Muhammad والسلام, said that he, the Mimadari, told me that he sailed a ship with 30 men from Lakam and Judam, and they were tossed by the waves of the sea for a month. Then they came to an island at sunset. Now, despite them saying that the, the sun never sets on the British Empire, which was their famous saying, we know it will be an island which has a PhD in lying, because here in this hadith, the sun was setting upon this island. The opposite of the sun never setting on this empire is that it will rise and continue rising from Britain, i.e. the sun rising from the west. Nonetheless, here is the first clue that the ship was tossed around for a month. So it will be an island that was one month's distance away from Arabia by sea. And indeed, the journey by ship from Arabia to the island of Britain took exactly one month. Having reached the island, they were met by a beast with a great deal of hair and they could not distinguish his face from his back because he was so hairy. And here is a second important clue. And you'll have to forgive us for this description, but you couldn't tell where the head was from the tail. Like in London and New York today, you cannot tell the difference between a man and a woman. You know it. Uh, I'd love to say that was a joke, but it's become a reality. Uh, but the actual clue really refers to an island that will hide its true identity. And so upon meeting this hairy beast-like creature, the Mima Dari and his companion said, Woe unto you! What are you? It replied, I am Al-Jasasa. Al-Jasasa is an Arabic word for spy. So it will be an island which will excel in spying. It will lead the world of espionage, like James Bond uh, or Lawrence of Arabia. In the early stages of this modern world, Britain displayed an extraordinary expertise in the world of spying. Even to this day, MI5 and MI6 agency is renowned as being the best in the world. Then they asked, what is Al Jasasa? And the beast replied, O oh people, go to this man in the monastery for he is keen to know about you. So clue number four here is telling us that it will be an island that will have monasteries. And monasteries are a crucial and integral part of the Christian way of life. So it will be an island or nation of Christianity. We also find here that Dajjal the Antichrist would indeed be a man and not merely a system contrary to what some people claim. So the Mima Dari and his companions went rushing to the monastery 
which they found lying in ruins. Clue number five. The ruined monastery implies that it will be a Christian island where the religious buildings, particularly the monasteries, will be lying in ruins. Thus, where religion will eventually collapse and crumble. The island will move away from religion and bring about a new modern way of life. Indeed, there are many historic monasteries lying in ruins in Britain. And Britain is essentially an atheist state, a godless state. They don't follow Christianity and the religious way of life anymore. It seems to have disappeared from Britain altogether. On arriving at the monastery, the Mimadari and his companions found the hugest man they had ever seen, with his hands tied to his neck and his legs bound from the knees to the ankles with iron shackles. They said, woe unto you, who are you? He said, you will soon find out about me. Tell me who you are. And then this man, who later identified himself as Dajjal the Antichrist, asked a number of important questions. One was related to a region called Baisan, which is located in modern day Jordan. Uh, but the question we want to focus on is as follows. He, the man said, tell me about the lake of Tabaria. We said, what do you want to know about it? He said, is there water in it? They said, there is a great deal of water in it. He said, soon it will dry up. And here is perhaps the most profoundest of clues found within this hadith. Lake Tiberias, which is also referred as the Sea of Galilee, and the Jews call it Lake Kinneret, is located in the Holy Land. This is a huge clue, and the Antichrist himself has provided a physical sign for us to look out for, that when the water level of the Sea of Galilee begins to fall, then know that Dajjal, the Antichrist, has already been released into the world. Has it been falling? When last did you check the water level of the Sea of Galilee? The State of Israel has been consuming the water from the sea, which a few years ago was at its lowest level since records began. Whilst the Muslim world have been watching Erdogan and getting excited about Turkey bringing back the Khilafah state, Dajjal the Antichrist has been advancing his mission before our very eyes. When are we going to wake up? Within this sign, there is one more clue about the Sea of Galilee. Nabi Muhammad wasalam, informed us about those who would consume the Sea of Galilee dry. Who are they? Perhaps if we studied the Holy Quran and Hadith, we would discover who they are. Gog and Magog. Yes, Ya'juj wa Ma'juj. In other words, Gog and Magog were also released a long time ago and they are linked to the Antichrist. How? They are his foot soldiers who are in control of the Holy Land. The Hadith is recorded in Sahih Muslim that the first of Gog and Magog would pass by the Sea of Galilee and would start drinking from it. And by the time the last of them would pass, the sea would be rendered dry. We argue the case that the first of Gog and Magog have already passed through the Sea of Galilee on the way to Jerusalem. And since that day, the state of Israel has been consuming water from the Sea of Galilee and thus the levels of the sea have been declining and declining to the point where the sea is almost fully dry. Having asked these strange questions, providing us with critical clues, the man then identified himself as Dajjal the Antichrist. He said, I am Dajjal and soon I will be given permission to emerge. So I will come out and travel in the land and I will not spare any town or city, but that I will stay there for 40 nights, except Makkah or Taiba, which is Medina. The Hadith then continues with some other points until its conclusion. But before it finishes, Nabi Muhammad wasalam, said, I liked the story of the Mimad Dari because it agrees with what I used to tell you about him, the Dajjal, and also about Makkah and Medina. But he, Dajjal the Antichrist, is in the Syrian Sea, i.e. the Mediterranean Sea, or 
the Yemeni Sea, which is the Arabian Sea. Uh, no, no, rather he is in the east. He is in the east and he is in the east. What we find here is that uh, Dajjal, when he is released from the island, the island from which he will launch his mission from, it will be from the seas of the world. Uh, so the Mediterranean Sea, the Arabian Sea, and of course, when we read history, uh, Britain ruled over the whole world and commanded every single naval port in the whole world. Uh, British uh, power and the British Empire survived as long as it did because of its capacity and its uh, mighty naval power which commanded the seas of the world. Having critically analysed this very important hadith about Dajjal, we conclude that the island in which he was chained upon was indeed the island of Britain. If that is the case, then Britain would eventually one day emerge as a ruling state in the world. And that is the only explanation that we can find of how such a small island uh, of shopkeepers, namely Britain, was able to appear on the stage of history and rule over the whole world. They entered every single town and every single city, Pa, Makkah and Medina, and they were able to colonize and occupy almost every single country in the world. In our previous episode about events unfolding in the Holy Land, we argued the case that the driving force and the mastermind behind all those events connected to the Holy Land is none other than the Dajjal, the Antichrist. Through numerous historic and present ongoing revolutions, the Antichrist has been able to redesign the whole world in order to bring about a new world order. Unifying and uniting nations as one, a global society through globalization and thus enslaved 99% of mankind to his new fake and false system and a new way of life. He is the one who liberated from the perspective of the Jews the Holy Land. He is the one who caused all of the world's Jews to return to the Holy Land after 2000 years to reclaim it as their own, making it appear as if this is Holy Israel when in fact it's an imposter state. He is the one who caused the state of Israel to come into being in 1948 and then caused this state of Israel to grow and grow into the superpower that it is today, ready more than ever before to replace the United States of America as the next, the third and the final ruling state in the world. But you already know this. Notice how all of these strange and mysterious revolutions, events and changes in the world unfold in one part of the world, particularly Britain, and then they spread like wildfire to the rest of the world. And then Dajjal's fitna, his trials and tribulations of the Antichrist are concentrated within towns and cities only. Dajjal himself said he would enter every town and city in just 40 nights. And our Prophet Nabi Muhammad wasalam, said that the Antichrist would live on earth for 40 days. How will he enter then every town and every city in just 40 days or 40 nights? He'll have to be a very smart and intelligent 40 day old baby to transform the world at such speed. No, <clears throat> excuse me, in the context of history, his mission in transforming the world will be achieved in what seems like only 40 nights in light of all the thousands and thousands upon thousands of years since history first began. Meaning, he will turn the world upside down and back to front very, very quickly. Guess what? He's already done it. Yes. And he is now very close to the end of his mission that is ruling the world from Jerusalem. Dajjal has already entered every town and every city. That's where he has been launching his attack on mankind for many years now. And perhaps that is why many of you find it extremely difficult to leave the cities. 
even though some of you feel enslaved, entrapped, suffocated and fed up, you cannot seem to find a, a way out. But the majority of mankind love the towns and cities. This is why the Antichrist has created these mega cities, which are centers for all kinds of fitna. That is where parliament sits and where the lawmakers are based to make their man-made laws the basis of kufr and shirk, blasphemy. That is where the banks and the money lenders are based, the centers for riba and usury. The cities are where the false education system is, the glitter and glamour of the city life and the shopping malls and entertainment establishments are beautifully laid out to attract and trap the youth and the younger generation. Half-naked women walking around, all the latest gadgets and tech. You can't find any of this in the village. It's only in the towns and cities. That's living life in the fast lane. No time for yourself or your family. And the list goes on and on and on. And living life in the cities is like Groundhog Day. Very tiresome. Where did this all begin from? All these mysterious events and changes in the world over the past 300 years came from the island of Britain. And whilst the masses may not be able to read the letters Ka, Fa, Ra on the forehead, whether they are literate or illiterate, we can read the letters Ka, Fa, Ra or Kafir on the forehead as clear as a billboard on the road to the airport. The very essence and foundation of British law and British system is built upon kufr and shirk, blasphemy. I know the British law very well indeed because I enforced it for nearly 16 years in my capacity as a British police officer. Thank Allah Almighty that I was able to leave my job and leave Britain three years ago. Alhamdulillah. Their law is based on kufr and blasphemy. Everyone knows it, yet everyone is still dying to go to Britain. That's strange. I don't know what is more strange, the island of Britain and its obsession with the Holy Land, or why everyone wants to go and live in Britain. I think the latter is the strangest of all things. But I came to the decision that we can no longer live in Britain or Europe. If you think it's okay to live there, then that's a matter for yourself. But we won't stop our effort and our mission in an attempt to save as many people as possible, knowing that 99% of the world will follow Dajjal the Antichrist. But we're not giving up on the 1% insha'Allah. And so there you have it. Uh, having studied this hadith in depth, uh, we reached the conclusion that it was the island of Britain from where Dajjal the Antichrist launched his mission from. And indeed, when you read history, uh, Britain has been responsible for many of the mysterious events that have unfolded in the world the past 300 years. Uh, it was Britain who originally replaced uh, the gold and silver coins as money with this paper check uh, money in, in the, I think, the 17th century. Um, it was Britain who uh, commenced the Industrial Revolution which subsequently led to the strange and mysterious scientific and technological revolution which is still evolving to this day. Uh, it was Britain who brought in the feminist revolution and many other revolutions. But out of all the strangest of strangest things, uh, Britain has always had this mysterious obsession with the Holy Land um, and the Balfour Declaration uh, was what allowed Britain to dismantle and destroy the Ottoman Islamic Khilafah state for the first time in our history and subsequently capture the Holy Land and thereafter allow the Jews to return to the Holy Land and to return to Jerusalem to reclaim it as their own. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.